All right, YouTube, Milo is going to go visit UC Berkeley uh, uh, today in things that I'm sure would have gone over well on the average day. Uh, Antifa and commies and uh, assorted social justice warriors that don't realize what real communism is uh, showed up. Uh, they got off early from their Marxism 101 classes and their women's studies and Holocaust studies uh, courses. They, they took, you know, a break. Their professors let them do that. And this group of trust fund babies decided to march around setting fires, uh, beating people, actually. One uh, individual just standing there, not literally doing nothing, just minding her own business, sort of pressed into a corner, got surrounded and pepper sprayed. Several people got attacked. And this is sort of the MO of Antifa. They, they have convinced themselves that anyone who's not a member of their movement or obviously like sort of associated with it, you know, like, oh, that pink haired girl over there with the kill all men shirt. Yeah, we'll leave her alone. But that other girl beside her who's got pink hair, doesn't have the kill all men shirt. You know, we should probably beat her to the ground and rape her or something. That's what Antifa does. They're a bunch of idiots. They've convinced themselves that anyone who's not a self-proclaimed anarchist or communist is like part of some massive problem. They don't even realize the average person, including the average leftist, honestly. They look at this, they say, what the fuck are these people smoking? It must be uh, a little more powerful than the weed that I've been smoking. You know, it is UC Berkeley after all, so I'm sure there's a lot of that going on. No, uh, this happens, thankfully there are parts of the country where you're sort of like sheltered from this. This tends to happen in... California and like Portland, Seattle, that region on the west. Sometimes in parts of the east coast, not not even as much. And then like Austin and Chicago and maybe like St. Louis. That's that's where you're limited to when you're talking about these people. You get some rich gated community, some upper class white suburb where there are no minorities around. You have a bunch of trust fund babies with two master degree holding parents living in a in a lower end McMansion. And yeah, you, you, it spawns a bunch of idiots, honestly. It spawns people that don't have any world experience. They think seeing the world is, is going to Cancun on spring break or taking like a field trip with their university that they pay two or three thousand dollars for. They're not going to do that traveling on their own, actually literally immerse themselves in anything outside of the academic institutions they're paying too much for because they don't have to worry about the cost. So I have uh, mostly contempt for people in that category of uh, human beings because they make everybody else's lives miserable. They even make the minorities miserable. A bunch of gated community dwelling upper middle class nerds from the white suburbs try to tell black people how to fix their communities. Oh yeah, I'm sure that'll go over so well. Why don't you wander down in the middle of the night if you're so, if you uh, consider race to be meaningless and all people are equal and no, you know, you're such a great advocate for minorities. Why don't you wander around around midnight, uh, you know, around the Mexican border in a cartel-held area? They'll leave you alone. You're such a great advocate for their cause. You know, no, uh, nobody else is going to attack you either because the average Hispanic person totally doesn't care that you conflate them with cartel members when you talk like that. Go to a black community. No, they don't, they don't care that you softball the gangs that make their lives a living hell every day. You should wander down the streets of Detroit at midnight with a shirt that says no slut shaming. That would be a great idea. I totally agree, you should do that. I encourage it completely. <clears throat> when you get hurt, when you get uh, beaten into the ground and killed or something like that, yeah, uh, you're not gonna hold me liable because uh, this, is, this is just satire, of course. I'm just joking, I'd never tell you to do something like that. Milo comes along, and practically every time he tries to hold an event, he's shut down. These people are too dumb to even realize what he's fucking doing. He's getting his name in the paper, and alongside them. They, the, what, what are the media uh, accounts right now of this whole fiasco? Milo tries to have a vent, you know, he's just Milo. Antifa and commies uh, beat people to the ground and throw Molotov cocktails and bricks. Now, in the average person's mind, the average person in the Western world who's been lied to their whole life and thinks everything's a dichotomy, when they see these two things matched side by side in a media report, what do they truly see? 
they see a bunch of violent hooligans who can't who piss their pants and can't stand the thought of anybody saying anything that they don't completely like next to somebody who eh, it's just milo they probably don't even know who he fucking is but now they're going to look into it probably most of them agree with him because they're comparing him to a bunch of violent savages that just decided it was a good idea to beat random people in the street this person just happened to be standing there oh pepper spray them that person's got a trump hat it's time to beat them into the ground meanwhile of course the weak ass police of the west coast who have been so cucked over time after uh, their former glory days when they actually fucking bothered to do something outside of portland they still seem to operate properly they sit by and do very little they form a line they keep them from going further they let them throw all the rocks and molotov cocktails they want it's retarded what they should have done is immediately charged in and arrested every single person participating in this i would have supported that there is a difference between the right to organize and protest and the non-existent right to destroy people's private property they are not the same thing a person's right to speak freely for instance does not extend to preventing others from speaking regardless of what their ideology happens to be it's like when they talk about <clears throat> you see on some of these uh moron twitter accounts oh punching a nazi is a long-term american tradition you're talking about richard spencer getting sucker punched on two different occasions oh it's a tradition so it's perfectly okay you know they're nazis i mean who fucking cares punching commies is a much longer american tradition does that mean that i should go into a crowd of self-proclaimed anarchists and communists and anarcho-communists and all the other weird shit they spin and start punching people out beating them to the ground with a baseball bat because it's, a, it's an american tradition all i have to do is cover my face walk up whack one in the back of the head and run off it'd be the same thing you're arguing for more human misery than any nazi ever did we fought the nazis for a few years in this country after world war ii they didn't exist anymore a handful of neo-nazis still lingered in europe that's about all and some nazis that got brutally uh, hunted down by american and jewish intelligence services those that weren't going through the rat lines and ending up as u.s uh, military scientists of course kind of a touchy issue on that one uh, but we we were punching commies out for decades and decades and decades a little bit of a difference so don't don't make the argument from american tradition to prop up your own violence unless you want a huge backlash as a result you ask the average person at this point i think which one is is more dangerous and violent they'd probably say communists they see it on tv every day they're not seeing a bunch of nazis killing people on tv beating people every day walking down the street goose stepping wearing their heil hitler shirts they're not seeing that because it's not happening what they see are self-proclaimed anarchists and communists doing that being more violent being like literal brown shirts only they happen to be far left at the time that they're being brown shirts so as far as a, a pr move you're getting completely hoodwinked antifa and all these groups you are so fucking stupid you don't know what you're doing you're a bunch of r retarded teenagers that don't know anything about strategy or organization being led by money grubbers who solicit funds and then divvy out a little bit to you for organization purposes while running you into the ground i mean it's i don't care i don't care if all of you are arrested all you know what how many antifa members are in the u.s maybe 10,000, 20,000, or something hey at least you're bigger than the ku klux klan yeah congratulations y'all i'll be in a prison cell soon if you keep going this way at some point somebody is gonna go real tough on you then to say enough is a fuck enough and they're gonna call in the national guard to deal with your asses and it's gonna be funny because you deserve it you're not protesting you're rioting you're not speaking you're preventing others from speaking you're the traitors here you're the fucking commies here you know it took us decades warning about communists communists people uh, towards the end didn't take it seriously now we see there are communists in the streets yeah they're a tiny minority yeah, most of them are too retarded to fight, too cowardly to do anything, but at the same time, they are there. If they took it, can you imagine if these idiots, these cretins were in charge? I saw a tweet last night. <clears throat> Somebody was saying, oh, some, some commie or something. As soon as we get the U.S. military on our side, then we can force Orange Hitler out. 
the US military would stomp you into the dirt and out of existence altogether. They're not going to join forces with Antifa and a bunch of commies. Are you fucking kidding yourself? Do you even hear yourself speak? How much weed did you smoke before you made that ill-begotten tweet? The U.S. military is more conservative than the general population by a pretty fair clip. You think that they're going to turn into a bunch of uh, red shirts? <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to be, like, high or drunk to completely lose it at the real stupidity of these people. And the hypocrisy, too. You look, uh, there's plenty of that to go around. That even comes from the center left at the moment. But I can't really talk too much about that because it comes from the right, too. The same people on the right that had no pro that had a huge problem with oh, executive overreach, Obama's legislating by executive order, and we've got judicial activism. Now they're in favor of excessive executive authority, and when the Supreme Court weighs in on, on their behalf, like they did with like McDonald versus Chicago years ago, they won't be ranting about judicial activism. They'll saying, ha-ha, wonderful decision, these glorious people in the Supreme Court. And the left does the opposite. All of a sudden, they actually care about drone strikes. They actually care about civilian casualties. They didn't there for a long time. Fucking tards, I told you that it was a problem. You pretended that made me a right winger at the time. I was just continuing to say the same things I said when fucking W was president. A warmongering asshole. Obama, warmongering asshole. I hope Trump doesn't turn out to be the same. I hope that we get four years in which the US president doesn't suggest invading a country. It'd be a welcome change. Did you not even realize Obama suggested, in, in a sense, uh, invading Syria? Did you not see that? Put more troops in Afghanistan and Iraq, too. We were still involved there. We're still occupying these countries. They're hellholes. Wonderful. Antifa's uh, too busy worrying about what pronouns I address them by to care about people that get, you know, brutally raped or killed by drone strikes overseas. They don't give a fuck. They don't care about human rights. They don't even care about, like, the, the freedom to protest or something. If they did, they'd be petitioning against all the other governments in the fucking third world. They'd be protesting against them. Oh, down with the House of Saud. Down with the Iranian regime. Down with Erdogan. Down with Shinzo Abe. Down with Putin. Down with the Chinese commie government, which prevents people from organizing. They'd be saying that, but they don't care about that. There's just a bunch of retards throwing rocks. It's just sort of a perennial activity for them. You notice the crowds are overwhelmingly very young individuals. You know, they're from 18 to 25 or so. Why do you think there aren't many people who are over like 30 in Antifa? It's because they grow up, they grow a pair, they have better things to do with their life, and they realize that it's fucking stupid and gets them nowhere. Their pipe dream about an anarchist world order will never actually occur. It's a uh, go wither away and dry up. There'll always be a few anarchists in this world. Unfortunate, but there always will be. What we should do is have a zero-tolerance policy when they start throwing rocks and Molotov cocktails. If they want to sit there and shout slogans, I don't care. I, I, I don't care. I don't care if a million commies descend on DC and all red and gold and sit there for a week constantly protesting. If they're not bothering anyone else, not attacking anyone, not setting fires, okay, go be commies. Yeah, go, go be communists and whatever you want to do. If you really think that's a great idea, go sit there and be fucking Marxist. But as soon as they start throwing punches or rocks or something like that, send the troops in. Don't even bother with the fucking police if it's a declare a state of emergency. Get the National Guard involved. Be easier. And by the way, they should like this. Usually you get the National Guard involved, they're more restrained than the, pil than the police. The police get involved, you know, skulls are getting cracked all over the place, tear gas is fine. You get the National Guard involved, they just stand there. They know no one's going to fuck with them. All they have to do is stand on the corner. They're soldiers. Nobody's going to fuck around with that. Some Antifa member with, with bricks, yeah, they really want to get their head blown off. Hmm, uh, wonderful. No, they don't. They still have some degree of self-preservation mind uh, in their head. Oh, it's a... Uh, it's funny, P poor Milo, he can't even uh, open his mouth without people protesting. He could say something as innocuous as, hey, I, I think I want, like, calamari for lunch. And all of a sudden, a hundred people show up outside of his window, and they're like, calamari's evil, it's a tool of the, of the Trumpite, evil, racist Nazis. 
something like that. It's uh, it's like how <laughs> how do these people get off every day? Is uh, all these little dicked trust fund babies and their andro and, uh, and completely androgynous girlfriends or boyfriends? You know, most of them probably. Uh, they have difficulties. They have some severe mental problems. Let's face it. That's about all. Peace out.